Like most kids, I was drawing on my school folder. You know, I was drawing waves and the things around me when I lived at the beach here in Laguna. I was looking at a, a record album cover. It was an illustration. For some reason, I got it in my head. I want to copy this. I want to duplicate it. That was like the first time that I realized oh, I have an unusual gift with my art. I kept drawing and painting, but I didn't really dive into it. I didn't major in art originally. I was actually a botany major. I ended up finishing a few years of college and then going to a commercial art school. So I went into the commercial art field. I don't know if that was a real conscious decision. It wasn't like, oh, I can either be a fine artist or a commercial artist. I just was sort of following the flow of how my life was evolving at the time. But I was getting my creative fulfillment in commercial art and graphic design. And I got really good at it and I really enjoyed it. And you know, several years had gone by while I was doing that and I hadn't painted in a while. And I met Donna, and when we met, she came to my house and saw a stack of paintings just stacked up against a wall, and she looked at them, and she, she literally said, you can do that, and you're not doing that with your life? And that was really kind of a wake-up call for me, realizing that I, I had this latent gift that I wasn't really honoring. So she gave me the space to build a business out of my art and to sort of build a new body of work again. And I was doing some graphics, I was doing some other stuff, but little by little I started letting that go and doing more of my fine art. Once I saw how well it was received and that people were really wanting more of it and it was selling well, then I was able to make that, make that leap, um, which I haven't looked back. As a magic realist artist. The underlying theme in all of my work is that they're, they're allegorical they're, and they're symbolic. So it's never about just what you see going on. There's always a story, there's always a deeper meaning. The animals, the people, the paintings where they're just objects or elements of nature, they're all saying something else. They're telling a deeper story. I think in some ways that was born from a lot of the illustration work that I was doing in my commercial art career. Because as an illustrator, you're given a book title, for example, or a concept, and you have to think about how do I make it interesting? How do I bring it to life in a new way? The way ideas typically come to me is they'll often come in sort of a snapshot. I'll, I'll just kind of get an image of, of something and it's often sparked by something I've seen and at that point I might go out and I start collecting images. I take a lot of photographs so when I'm just out and about I'll see a scene, I'll see, I don't know, something unusual or something just every day. I'll intuitively feel, okay, that's like a setting for something to be going on in that. That's like the stage and then over time I'll see something else and I'll think, oh, yeah, that fits with this. It's almost like doing stage setting in a play. And even as I'm talking about it, I'm realizing my art is like kind of showing up for me, the characters in my art, almost like they're alive. You know, they're showing up at the right time. For me, it's become a signature part of my work that every painting has a paragraph or so that talks about what's going on, what the symbolism is. Sometimes it's a made-up story that almost makes it like a picture book. So there's, you know, a story happening in the, in the painting, and then I've written a little story that's an additional piece of fiction. Very often I see people in tears, not because they just saw the painting, but because they saw the painting and then they read the story. So by having these narratives, people have a deeper experience, and it's a deeper experience for me too to be able to, to share that. There's a writer in me too that's equally satisfied by the writing as I am by the painting. Being a symbolic artist, I have come to the point where I'm able to look at my life symbolically. When I, so when I see things going on, I'm like, okay, well, symbolically, what does this mean? And what does it mean for me in my life? And how do I use it? I'm starting to experience things in my reality, in my daily life, that I look at, I'm like, wait a second, that's, you know, it just feels like a scene out of a Fellini movie or something. You know, things happen to me on a more and more regular basis that are really serendipitous and magical, and I'm realizing how malleable life really is. Life isn't static, and we just happen to be plopped into it. It responds to us. It, it, responds to our emotions and our beliefs and that life is really happening through us, not to us. And I'm realizing as I, my paintings evolve that that's a big part of the message is that your life is a painting and you can make it whatever you want. And it's a matter of being conscious about what you're putting into your painting and what are you 
feeding it through your thoughts and through your emotions and your desires and your dreams because that's what your life is going to give back to you. So really it's about giving the message that I'm not just the creative one giving you a piece of art. I'm giving you a seed of creativity to put into your house that maybe you'll remember that you're an artist too, of, you know, of your own experience, of your own life. Um, because I think the more of us that are living that way, the better the planet will be.